G'day folks. Oh, welcome to a Monday afternoon. A uh, few little things happening. A lot of stuff come in today. Uh, unfortunately no tyres for the Nissan Micra yet. I'm going to have to chase them up because it's taken way too long. Uh, but I definitely have a few other little goodies. Uh, first off I did forget to put the uh, link to this musician in the uh, description of the Yamato Dataway video so I'm going to include it now. Uh, as I've said before, if you just YouTube author and Punisher, you'll find various videos, but he's also got a main website and Facebook and all that sort of stuff, so I will uh, endeavour to prop that up for you to watch. If you're into industrial music or just seeing machinery used to make music, it's uh, pretty serious looking stuff. I've never seen it before in my life and it's really awesome. Uh, what else? Something cool came in today, my Fear Factory album quite late I must add but it's in. Funny thing is it's got a sticker on the back. If it's not for sale why did they charge me $14.99 for it? <laughs> oh well. Um, it also has two bonus tracks on it which I couldn't find on YouTube. I just did a quick search but it's got Blush Response, the different en Difference Engine Remix and Timelessness 2. I quite like the creepy sound of Timelessness so I'm going to put this on and play it as soon as possible. I'll stick it in that PC down there and uh, give it a whirl. Um, yeah, awesome album, it's really grown on me, apparently uh, they used, their drummer was working on some other project so they used a PC to, or computer synth to do all the drumming. Uh, I didn't realise that at first until someone told me, I looked it up and sure enough they used a, uh, a synth for it. But to be honest I didn't even notice. I'd listened to the, some of the leaked tracks when they came out first and I had no idea that was all electronically synthesised bit disappointing for such an awesome band like Fear Factory that have been going such a long time to use electronic synth but either way it's growing on me I love it any metal metalhead should listen to it at least once uh, it is on YouTube but you can probably download it from iTunes and buy the actual album I still support buying CDs even though they're pretty impractical these days um, I wish my car's head unit had a, U a USB drive plug-in or something so I could just chuck mp3s on it but uh, it doesn't at the moment, so... Oh well. Yeah, I'm going to build a little rear, rear centre brake light for the Micra out of these. I noticed Trady Trev was offering me one, but that was fairly large. I apologise for not getting back to you on that one, but... Um, I'm going to make something out of these little truck side lights. They're only got a little neon or something in there. A 12 volt. Uh, they're actually quite bright, so they'll do the job just fine. Um, likewise on the Micra, brake shoes are in. We'll do them this weekend, hopefully. I don't have tyres yet, but I'll at least get the brakes and stop them from leaking before I put good tyres on it, because the one that keeps going down is uh, badly fluid affected. I don't know if it's related to the fluid or not, I just haven't really bothered trying to fix it, because I know there's really no point. Uh, it's not, they're borderline roadworthy, but I'm going to replace them all anyway. The front tyres are better, they've rotated them recently. Likewise, these cheapo LCD brackets, I'm going to do something with them, whether one, one monitor ends up up here or I mount both of these onto a swivel arm that I've got and put dual monitors up somewhere. Um, they're only little 15s, so I've got two of them. I should have probably bought more, they're only like $12.95 or $14.95. They're really cheap, but they seem solid enough for what I'm doing. I'm not putting any massive screen on it, not like I wouldn't hang the Sony on it, but small 17 inch monitors are way bugger all so yeah they're not bad uh, anyway what else uh, various video stuff going on I know there was a lot of requests for me to do more water experiments including trying to drive on water filled tyres which is a really bad idea um, the only car I could do it with is the Ford Festiva little car and there's nothing to achieve by doing it in the backyard. You just can't get any speed up and there's no bumps or as such. Uh, the only way water in a tyre, like full water, would affect drivability would be the rebound time on the suspension. Uh, suspension's there to keep the tyre on the road when it bounces and push it back down to the road. If you've got 20 kilos of water in it, it's going to come up and stay up a lot longer. So you get this really crazy, uncontrollable effect. Like if I had a skid pan with pre-made terrain with ruts and that sort of stuff, like a test a test track, I'd do it. But I don't have a test track to actually do this sort of thing safely off the main 
roads. Like I cannot drive that car on road without full registration, roadworthy, and trying to overturn a scrap metal title. Because officially I bought that as scrap metal. So if the seller notified RTA of that when I when they cashed the plates in, because it still had eight months rego on it, but if they cashed the plates in and uh, notified them it was sold as scrap, that's it. It's gone. It has to be destroyed. So. What do you do? It doesn't matter. It was only a $180 car. I don't care. It's an experiment. It's a test subject. One of my interns. <laughs> and apparently has a bit of a following, so people will kill me if I kill it. I know Brad wants to come and do something awful with it, like, I don't know, burnout or something, but, uh, yeah. Likewise, I popped my last little 70-watt metal halide the other night. I was setting up a ballast and a little round down lamp and had it running on the test table just fine, and I just hear this little pop, and the light went out. Sure enough, the little inner bulbs failed completely. Oh well, I'll get some more of them later. Anywho, I think that's about all for now. Um, yeah, not much else. I just want to rip into some more old stuff that's been floating around, make some room. And uh, yeah, hopefully get into the Jag engine next as well, get that out of the way. Well, there's a lot of parts to be sold off for spares and reconditionable parts. So that'll live on in various ways. Uh, it's not going to run again because there's too much missing from it. Starter motor for one. Um, not so much carbies. The carbies are all back together and complete, but the um, distributor's missing bits too. I pillaged it and took out anything good for the uh, Series 1, which I no, long no longer have. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's about all for now. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. As I said before, no flashy titles or anything silly. Uh, these videos are going to stay as crude and basic as possible. Oh yeah, a few people asked me what Ramblatronic means. It's basically a term I pulled out of my ass to label my vlogs. <laughs> That's all there is to it. I was going to use Ramblamatic, but I remembered that was part of a um, Escapist magazine column. So I'm not going to pinch their title, I'm going to make my own. Um, so yeah, if you don't like vlogs and things like that, don't watch anything that's titled Ramblematic. That's the main reason I made it, was people were complaining about me mixing vlogs in with silly titles, and they didn't know what they were getting. So now, if you don't like vlogs, don't watch anything that's titled Ramblematic. I know I throw little bits and pieces in that you can learn from, that sort of thing, and I know people will always watch because of that, but generally, no. It's just, just rambling. I put a little volt meter on this PC too, and it's Quite interesting watching the voltage fluctuate on that little power supply. It's only a 120 watt or 180 watt delta power supply, but uh, it's still working fine. But I connect that up to a battery, it'll sit around 12.7 to 13 volts and then stay there. As soon as I connect it up to this switch mode 12 volt rail, it's just all over the place. So I wonder if that power supply is about done. Oh well, when this PC dies, it dies. I don't really care. I'll run it till it dies. Pull the hard drive out, stick it in something else, and go from there. Anywho, thanks for watching.